I just thought I'd make a quick video uh, and go through the, the basic overview of my analog computer kit that I'm working on. Um, so this is the uh, system. Uh, right now it's jumpered together to simulate the uh, Lorentz uh, chaotic attractor. Uh, it's running uh, three coupled nonlinear ordinary differential equations and I'll talk about that in a minute. So uh, it's a modular system where you can add or remove computational elements as you need um, to build your system. So the first board on the left, which is just a prototype right now, this is the control board. So uh, this switch uh, sets the, the run bus to either run or hold your simulation. This button loads the initial conditions into all of the integrators. Uh, it takes plus or minus 15 volts. And uh, this regulator generates the 5 volts, which is used to run the logic on the control bus. And these are just some uh, uh, power rails that are available if you want to set uh, initial conditions in your simulation. So, and the other thing to point out is that it's modular. So, uh, you know, uh, you can take everything apart and move it around or add elements as you need. So, this board here is one integrator board. And it has two integrators on it. And... Um, you can jumper in capacitors uh, for the integrators, and uh, you can set the initial conditions using uh, this input jack. So um, when this button is pressed, the uh, analog switch here switches the integrator and loads the cap with the initial conditions. And then when you release this button and switch the uh, run bus to the run mode, the integrator integrates in time. So uh, each board has two integrators. There's four inputs per integrator, and you can put in your own resistors so you can change the scaling factors on all the inputs. So this board right now is set up to compute the X and Y equations for the uh, Lorentz system. So then here's another integrator board. I'm only using one integrator here for Z. And then these two boards here are uh, multiplier boards. So each board has an 8633. And I apologize, the silk screens got messed up on this run. I was trying to get fancy with graphics. But uh, so this is a, a multiplier chip, and it has inverting and non-inverting inputs, and it also has a summing input. Um, so basically, it'll take uh, this minus this times this minus this plus this and give uh, that as an output. So it's a really uh, powerful uh, computational uh, element. And uh, there are two product terms in the Lorentz equation, so I need two multipliers. So anyway, uh, this is the system. And uh, I'll uh, zoom in here and we'll show you the results on the scope. So there's probably some noise in the background from the fan and the power supply. But uh, this is the Lorentz attractor running on my little Tech 214. As you can see, it's a really itty bitty scope. Um, and right now I have some small capacitors uh, put in the integrators so the uh, time scaling uh, lets you see uh, the attractor in detail. And I'm going to switch the caps out now and uh, we'll, we'll get a much slower sim. So I'll pull out the three caps and uh, oh wow it's doing something strange right now. So let's put in 100 nanofarads this will slow things down a little bit. So it doesn't change the equations at all. It just rescales the uh, time axis to put in different capacitors. So, oh, loose connection, maybe. There we go. What did I do wrong? Um, yeah, the connectors are not optimal right now, but uh, they're much less expensive than using banana plugs. So, okay, so here is the uh, Lorentz attractor running at a, at a slower uh, time scaling. And if I switch uh, right over here, if I switch the run button, the simulation stops. So you can stop the simulation wherever you would like. And uh, right now the initial conditions aren't uh, really set. But um, pressing initial conditions pulls the simulation off. And because it's a chaotic attractor, it always comes back to this basin of attraction. But uh, for these capacitors, the leakage is not too bad. So I can stop the sim. And it'll drift over time. But um, it's pretty good for a very low-cost uh, computer. 
so the system has plus or minus 10 volt scaling so um, if you are able to read the voltages to a tenth of a volt then um, from zero to the full scale you have a one percent accuracy in the computer which is which is pretty good um, it's good for engineering purposes and that's why um, you know old analog computers were able to do real problems able to able to solve real problems accurately um, the older computers used typically plus or minus 100 volts and so you know it was it was easy to get uh, very accurate results just measuring you know with a tenth of a volt or you know 10 millivolts so uh, there's the uh, Lorentz attractor um, and that's it I'll uh, be posting some more information in videos and different simulations shortly but I just wanted to get something up to uh, show people what I was working on. Alright, thanks.